Annie had an earache on a Saturday of all days. So her mom brought her to Minute Clinic at CVS, where you can see a provider, fill a prescription, and grab essentials like pain relief products, all in one visit, even on evenings and weekends. You can even see us online with telehealth options. For quality, affordable care on your schedule, visit Minute Clinic at CVS. That's healthier made easier. Services vary by location. See MinuteClinic.com for details. Holidays are here, and so is fashionable fitness. Gift yourself a Samsung Galaxy Z Flip 3 5G, a phone that folds in half to literally stand on its own. Pair it with the Galaxy Watch 4 for ultimate wellness and wow factor. Check health stats, flex personal records. Over 90 activities can be tracked, like biking, swimming, golfing, and more. Invest in yourself with tech made to crush goals. Holidays open up with Galaxy. Shop it all at Samsung.com. 5G connection and availability may vary. Check with Carrier. Products sold separately. That long day behind you, good times lie ahead. With company worth keeping, then a bash your smile on your head. Come on in, the doors open, you'll find just the finest folks here. Pull up a chair, grab a drink, and let our stories your ear. Cause we're the talk, talk, talk the tavern. Here you're always welcome. The talk, talk, talk the tavern. Promising beer and bed love. The talk. And welcome to Talk of the Tavern. I am your host, Travis I. Sivart. You can... Uh, what else do I do? Oh, my vices. Uh, I have the wonderful Henry McKenna. You know, guys, I just bought like five new bottles of different bourbons and whiskeys, and I poured the cheap stuff that I drink most oh, nights. I wasn't thinking. I've got right yeah. tears back there, Jameson Stout, um, Double Oak, Jim Bean Double Oak. I guess the other Ooh. one is just rum and spiced rum. But yeah, I've got three good whiskeys or bourbons. What kind of rum? What kind of spiced rum? Kraken? I, Kraken and then Bacardi. Bacardi White. <laughs> but anyhow, I'm Travis. I'm your host. I'm drinking Henry McKenna, apparently. Much to my own surprise. And a Coke Zero. And I might smoke a pipe. Haven't decided. Depends if I need to do something with my hands while you guys are talking that doesn't involve me taking off my pants first. But. Okay. Yeah, I know. By the way, I am also uh, not only the host of the show, but also I'm a writer. And you can find my books just by going to bit.ly slash Travis Books. That's B-I-T dot L-Y slash Travis Books. B-I-T dot L-Y slash Travis Books. That's my intro. Let's pass it over to Ed, who's showing his disappointment in me. I'm not disappointed at all, bro. I'm Ed. I am drinking, let's see. Uh, oh, Josh Sellers, Pinot Noir. First time trying it. The first glass, not so good. The second glass, is, it's getting better as it goes along. Hey, so you know, you're not just... Writing... Huh? You... I'm sorry, I'm going to back to you're not disappointed that I'm u- drinking the cheap stuff instead of the good stuff? Nah, you, you, you'll be all right, you know. I didn't write any books, and you can find me by coming to my house and knocking on the door if you can figure out what the fuck the address is. Andrea? Your or, or you can go to his YouTube channel, which has a very easy address of... Uh, Really, do I not have it out there? Hold on, we get, we, I got it here. You do not. <laughs> um, okay, you if you go to bit.ly slash Ed Summers YouTube, that's B-I-T dot L-Y Ed Summers YouTube. Look at you. You can find his YouTube channel. Go ahead, Andrea. Yeah, sorry. you can. Hey. Well... I know your address. I'll go knock on the door. Um, Andrea LaChat here. I I might knit. I don't know. That's the thing. I have Pringles. And because I don't drink alcohol, I have tea. Very good. You are That's much it. further from your mic than you were pre-show. She moved I'm my sorry? Head. You just got turn quieter. Her yeah. I did turn, turn her around. Her I don't know. I couldn't hear you over the I'm scraping just- noise of your mic. You also had something else you wanted to try, correct? Oh, oh, that's right. It's probably best. So, 
Andrea was ever so kind to bring me some key lime M and M's, and I figured she could uh, and I could try them for the first time no. ever on air, or the sec second time ever if she cheated and ate one before the show. I don't know what you're talking about. So if you watch the poker game, I think that's a poker game. I don't know. Whenever Robert was on, he was talking about the key lime M and M's. We were talking about the key lime M and M's. So I bought some for Travis. Here we go. They don't smell like key lime. The candy like yeah, shell do. doesn't taste. Does it? Okay, I'm biting smell. into it. They smell like pie crust. <laughs> That's what they taste like, too. They taste like key lime cheesecake. Mm. She's not impressed. Which I guess would be I key lime pie, right? Yeah. Those are okay. The lime is not very pronounced. Definitely get a sugary aftertaste, but you get an initial burst of lime and almost graham cracker. Guys, you got to see your face. Andrew, can you make noises that represent your face right now, please? <laughs> I don't like it. And I. this is my second m and I tried. I really don't like it. I had to make sure I don't like it. They do say third time's a charm when you try another one. My That's eyes are watering. My eyes are watering. My face hates this. <laughs> hmm. I don't know what's going on with it. Okay. <laughs> and everybody knows where they can find Andrea over here on Twitch, right? Hmm. <laughs> Yeah, right here. It's underscore oh. just underscore a underscore not cheered. X three hundred. Very good. Thank you. Appreciate that. <sighs> you nut. I just want to keep eating those. Those are. Oh God! I have some you can okay. have. I want my peanut butter M and M's. <laughs> they're they're <laughs> below the, they're below the trolley. <clears throat> okay, let's get a quote here, and we'll raise our glass. Oh, oh, tonight's topic. I totally didn't mention that or, or other things. So. We're going to be talking about upgrading society. We'll be talking about what that means in a moment. Also want to let everybody know here in chat, we are recording a podcast right now. We're live recording a podcast. You're part of our not quite a studio audience. So we're going to read your comments and, and make you a part of the show. But only if your comments and questions are either witty or relevant. Or, or preferably both. You might hear me use this noise. That means I want to read some comments and interrupt somebody there. Was it the bell or did you eat another M&M with that face you're making over there, Andrea? No, but I just want to remind everybody, yay, you want to see my reaction to this M&M? Find us on Twitch. And by the way, if you don't catch this live, if you're listening to this on the podcast, you can go to Twitch afterwards and watch the VOD, Video On Demand. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. okay. Um... Told chat they're part of this. Now let me tell the podcast. I I think I co did I cover it all? I told chat, I told podcast. Can we have a toast and drink? A what? Go figure it out. Also, adult channel, adult topics. We drink, we smoke, we swear. If that's not your thing, go Fuck over yeah. there. Um, yeah, we got to do mm -hmm. toast. So Cogsley's toast that he suggested, that's our room bot. Andrea might not have a room bot, but she's got a room bot. It's not the daily increase, but daily decrease. Hack away at the unessential. Which is not your co-workers, no matter how much you want to. <laughs> Anybody else got a personal toast before we go on? Mm -mm. I do. So, this past weekend, I, I'm editing my latest novel, book two of the Silver and Smith series. And it's almost a full rewrite. Something's changed in my writing, so... I'm putting a lot more work into cleaning it up than I would normally need to. But to take a break, I started a brand new writing project this weekend. Enjoyed the hell out of it. <clears throat> it had no strings attached, no world. I just wrote and wrote and wrote. And got about 3,000 words in a couple hours. And it was very, very satisfying, very fun. But the story itself is a bit dark, which I'm okay with that. I mean, I didn't kill all the characters yet, so I'm not George R. R. Martin. But here's to doing what you love 
free form instead of constrained. Well, free form is always best made. We're doing who you love. <laughs> yeah, free form. Hmm. Okay, there's our opening toast. So, now the topic updating society. There are certain changes going on in our society right now, as there always is, but we're making kind of large changes across the board. Now, we're going to discuss some of these changes anywhere from popular icons in literature, toys, monuments, etc. that are changing straight down to what if the changes are just a gloss over the actual problem? And are we addressing the actual problem or not? Is there something deeper? So we're going to look at all this, but I want to let Andrea have a first say on this because this was her idea. She hit a frustration point and she's like, how about updating society? You want to tell us a little bit about why you came to? Well, I read an article and there was stuff in it. It seemed okay, relevant, whatever. And then they're like, no more Mr. Potato Head. It's just Potato Head. And I think that was my breaking point. I'm like, you have Mr. Potato Head, you have Miss Potato Head, and you have Baby Potato Head. Well, it's still, all they're doing is removing the prefix. I mean, you still have all the same pieces. You can make a Mr. or Mrs. if you want, but it's just Potato Head. It's an all-in-one potato. That's bad marketing. Oh, so, so we're not going to be polite anymore and say Mr. Potato Head? My, my mom will kick my ass if I don't call him Mr. Potato Head because he's older than me. <laughs> <laughs> Does anybody remember the original Potato Head? Yeah, it was yeah. an actual potato and you put stuff in it. Well, they didn't sell the potato. They just sold the parts that you stuck on a real potato. Did anybody ever have one? Hi, Jewel. Welcome yeah. to the tavern. Hey, Jewel. What's up, girl? I can't stop eating these. I'm going to have to move these out of the room. <laughs> That's why I Andrea and I are in a separate room before. also. Oh. That's a different show. <laughs> Find us on my fans or fans only, whatever the fuck the site is called. Fans only. <laughs> you were saying, Andrea, about your potato. Yeah, I didn't have that when I was little. We were very poor. Yeah. We had to eat the potatoes. We couldn't play with them. We couldn't afford yeah. the little. Whatever. Got your ass kicked if you've been playing with the potatoes. <laughs> Hey, when those extra eyes grow on potatoes, if you leave them alone, do, do they become a brand new potato? If you cut it. Mm -hmm. If you cut that portion off and plant it, that becomes brand new potato plant. Because potatoes don't come from seeds, they come from other potatoes. Other potatoes, yep. Mm. So they divide like, like amoebas, pineapple. right? Yeah, kind of, yeah. sort of, yeah. So, Andrew, what else inspired you to bring this topic to the table? I forgot. Was it just Mr. Potato Head? Was that the only thing? No. No, but that was the main thing. I'm like, that was that was one of the main things, the toys and, and stuff. I have a lot, but I don't want to give all mine in the beginning of the show. Then I have nothing to... Why don't you just take one and talk about it for 20, 30 minutes? No. <laughs> <laughs> Updating the society, key line, mem and m should go. <laughs> What's wrong with the new key lime m and ms Where shall I start? <laughs> That's another show. No, I don't like them. No, um, just with the... I don't know. Okay, so they get rid of the Mr. and Mrs. on the potato heads. Okay. 
But I work Did, in retail, and I see some of these dolls. They have dolls that poop and everything. Can we not mm -hmm. update that? Can we just not? Mm -hmm. There we go. <clears throat> Sorry, I was just uh, correcting something then. So you you don't want dolls that poop. What do you... You just want them to keep it inside and have like constipated Barbie or something? <laughs> That's creepy. They used to have a doll that did that. Yeah, they still do. Yeah. They okay. have dolls that talk and everything and they're motion activated and when I walk past that aisle, they all jump and shake and talk and they fall off the shelf and it's very creepy. Baby hmm. alive or something. <laughs> Baby undead. <laughs> Mama. That's a good one. You do that. <laughs> There we go. And yes, Jewel, they have Keylon M and M's. Uh, Travis has been much on them. Yeah. Yeah, we just tried them on air right before you came in. Hey, Word, how are you? Glad to see you here in the tavern. I've got to move this. <clears throat> you don't like your new cushion? Oh, there we go. Okay, I need help, guys. Give Charlotte. Well, Char said, give that baby a what? What is that word? Phylactery. What is a phylactery? Well, a phylactery is a generally a small leather box that the Jewish folks would keep <coughs> Hebrew texts in. Um, but there are other definitions too. For example, there is like a lich's phylactery. Oh, I get it now. Okay. Um, so that's is the that jar the where you put the life force of a lich. Hmm? hmm? I wasn't sure if that was for the pooping or the undead baby. Well, yeah, probably mine. If it's pooping out its life force, then it could be both. Yes. Mm. This show has taken a very bad turn. Mm. Can we move on? I don't, I am just steering it away from other things. That's all. That's all. Mm. Just moving in a different direction. <clears throat> yes. No. So, Ed, you had a few frustrations about things that have been updated. Uh, some some certain icons from our childhood in the food aisles have been. By the way, not all Uncle of them. Ben. Go ahead. Uncle Ben's and Aunt Jemima. Okay. I mean, I know what they're trying to say, but hey. Uncle Ben and Aunt Jemima, they were representing, okay? They were representing the black folks, okay? And you just took them away from us, just just like that. You just took away from us, you know? It ain't going to erase all those years of black slaves raising rice down in the South. No, that was cotton. Never mind. But anyway, you, you just took it right away from us. And my mom was Aunt Jemima, okay? Sunday mornings in the kitchen with her little apron on, and she had her little thing on the head and little curlers sticking out from underneath in the front, you know? She used to cook up some love in that kitchen. Aunt Jemima represented love to me. So, I, I don't know. Doesn't make any sense to me. Well, Ed, on behalf of white people, I apologize that you don't know you were being repressed. <laughs> <laughs> Who knew? It's, uh, I I'm here to inform you that you are, you're horribly being repressed. And, uh, yeah, not that you weren't smart enough to notice it. Oh! Mm. But, uh, yeah. Yeah, you were. I, I read it on the internet and in the newspapers. Oh. And I bet your white person told you, right? <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> <laughs> what did it with? What is it now? Did they, just replace, did they replace the name or? Actually, no. I want to say some of them they're replacing with, like, instead of Uncle Ben's rice, it's going to be, like, Ben's Rice or something like that. Yeah, uh, and Aunt Jemima is just the parent company name, and I can't remember what that name is now. But but yeah, I want to say so. one of these, or Mrs. Butterworth or whatever, they're just updating her so she's modern. But, yeah, but uh, Aunt Jemima is just the parent company name now, so they fired the black woman. She didn't have a job now, and everything's supposed to be right. So, so there's another white person that took a black person's job away from them. Yep. Damn it, this is what we were trying to avoid. 
on behalf of white people, Ed, <laughs> I'm going to have to apologize for everybody taking away the jobs of the fictional characters yeah. in our grocery stores. Toucan Sam mm-hmm. is next, okay? Mm-hmm. Joel said Pioneer Mills. I think that's right. That sounds very close. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, wait a minute. They removed the black woman to put the pioneers in there. Wasn't that who was mistreating the... So they took... (laughs) What, Andrea? Oh, well, okay. So they got rid of Uncle Ben, but what about the Crackler Oats back? I never See, liked him anyway. He was kind of creepy. I like his hat, though, man. His head is rocking. His you know? hat wouldn't fit my big old round head. But then again, his head's kind of <laughs> round. Maybe it would look good on me. <laughs> yeah, I just... uh tip from the oatmeal guy. Like, I'm curious. Is that a wig or is that his real hair? Because maybe they could update that and just give him, you know, like a nice fade or something. Same hat, Dreads. same outfit. Dreads. Give him some dreads. You, oh, you, you want to yeah, sure. you yeah. hear some great multiculturalism? Oh, hey, society, man. Oh, you're going to fucking love this. Ed, I might have already told you this. I don't even remember if I said it on a previous episode. So I'm learning to play didgeridoo. And the first week when I got my didgeridoo, I went and checked out some videos on YouTube. I ran across a Japanese guy with a French accent that's in Australia... Teaching the didgeridoo, and he had dreads. Cool. So a Japanese guy with a French accent in Australia, teaching the didgeridoo, and he has dreads. That is multiculturalism. Mm -hmm. And by the way, good teacher, great energy, and a talented player beyond, you know, all this other stuff. But, yeah, I subscribe. Maybe want to play a little bit. You know, it's, it's, that's the kind of person, if you have them as a friend, you could be like, hey, I've got a black friend, I've got an Asian friend, I've got a European friend. They're all the same person, but i got a friend. I and, and all that. Yeah. See? It's there. <laughs> okay. What else is being it's removed, true. changed, or shifted, updated? What else has been updated? Do you guys want to talk about Dr. Seuss? Hell yeah. Did you just say hell yeah while shaking your head no? Hell yeah. (laughs) Did you just do it again? (laughs) (laughs) We'll talk about Dr. Sink. Okay, so... um, So here we have... Ed, why don't you take this one? (laughs) <laughs> this is actually one that my brother and I have talked about and my brother and I don't agree on anything politically socially we agreed that getting rid of Dr. Seuss or any Dr. Seuss books was bullshit okay um, I, I've said on, on the show before I was raised in a home where blackness was very very important okay my dad taught back black history to us as children um, he led the fight in the integration of schools locally, so he was a civil rights, a- civil rights activist upon himself. Um, he didn't see anything wrong with Dr. Seuss. You know, we grew up with him reading us Dr. Seuss and me reading to him Dr. Seuss before going to bed at night. So if this man didn't see anything wrong with Dr. Seuss, there's not a damn thing wrong with Dr. Seuss. But I don't the- get it don't understand it the pictures in particular the two pictures that were largely pointed out is one in the depths of africa and has some very native looking folks and yes big lips and the other one is the kind of stereotypical 1870s china uh people from china so they've got the slanted eyes and you know the the one shirt that with the kind of bamboo buttons. Hmm. So are those something we want kids looking at? Would it kill them? Well, if you hit them hard enough with it, <laughs> enough paper cuts. <laughs> but that's really ramping the show in a direction I wasn't planning to go tonight. <laughs> I'm 
mean, I, I know the pictures you're talking about, and I never really just thought anything of it as a kid. I'm not, I didn't think, oh, Dr. Seuss is making fun of black people or. or well, let me ask you this. You got grandkids, right? Yeah. And they're young, like elementary school age or younger, right? Yeah. 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 Oh, God damn. My cat fell off the shelf when he fell asleep again. Okay. I got you, big guy. So, um, oh, Wordwin brings up a good point. Wordwin says, I think it make more sense to change the art for future editions. Hmm. That might not be a bad point. Well, yes, Andrea? I think that... I think that's a good idea right there. And also, they didn't say, oh, we're going to burn all the copies. We're just not going to print it anymore. Right. We're just not producing right. more. So there are still but, copies out there. And yes, I, I agree with what Weird One said. You said something similar pre-show. And I said, yeah, we, we, we talk about that on show. I, I don't necessarily disagree with that. I mean, books change their art all the time for various reasons. Mm -hmm. What I have a problem with is this, we have to do this now to make things better. What the fuck are you really making better by changing a book or the art in a book? You're not changing people's minds. What they're looking at, though, they're hoping to change future generations' minds, which is why I was talking about your grandkids. Do you think if some white kid reads these books and then goes to elementary school with a friend from China or a black friend, or the, the black kid or the Chinese kid read these books and they go, oh, this is just what people think of us. Now, I'm not actually sure because it looked like primitive Africa and we can go to National Geographic and see people who look just like those pictures in that book. Absolutely, exactly. Um, and so... Uh, yeah, do you think by not have by having those pictures in there, it can create cast a negative shadow on somebody of a different culture or race for a young mind as it's growing, where you still can change your mind? Well, look at me. I turned out all right. I read those books. That's <laughs> well, we won't blame the books for how you turned out. How about that? <laughs> no. Okay. Okay. So there's another yeah. change. Yes, Andrea? Another thing is, and at least they're not saying, okay, we're getting rid of all the books. We're just not going to print them. So that leaves open to where if people have access to these books, it can start a discussion with the children and say, hey, times have changed. This is not right. I think that should be an option. Are schools yanking them from their libraries yet? Yes. Okay. Yes. So it is more than just we're not making more. Right. It is um, more than that. Um, yeah. And again, obviously, because of the, the arguments I'm putting forth, I'm, I'm on the fence. I see both sides of this. And I'm bothered on one hand, but I understand. Yes, Andrea, I saw you. Oh, no, I'm, I'm letting you finish your thought. I'm, I'm, I, so, I'm putting some ellipsis at the end of this, dot, dot, dot. Okay. So, um, okay, I understand things need to be updated and changed and it happens that's that's great but when they teach literature like in classes and college and things are they not even going to talk about it are they just like oh no no more discussion i think it should be brought up especially for the higher education classes hey this is what it was this is what it is now and you know have it especially for higher if you don't education know, if they get rid of everything they get rid of all of this Who's to say someone's not going to do it again? Mm. So something we discussed, mm. shit, almost, almost 10 years ago, not quite, is in Mark Twain's books, they removed certain racial slang from it, especially Ninja. in... Sure. Um, <laughs> but, uh... Yeah, see, okay, let me read a couple comments and I'm going to go back yes. to this. And we're, what I'm going to, what I'm aiming to do here is basically bullet point some of the other changes we've seen over the past decade and then move into are we addressing the cause or are we addressing a symptom? 
or mm-hmm. both. And, and we can go back and forth on that. So Jules says, Ed, you probably also grew up in a frame of mind. If you're not hurt, just walk it off. Yeah, and yeah absolutely. Word says it also seems to be a great opportunity to teach, but people rather throw it away than take the time to teach. Right. So as, the, as Andre was saying, I, I think that's the issue with me. It's, it's the whole let's erase this rather than show an actual evolution. We're going to erase this. You can take that book and compare it to something today and show that there's been an actual evolution. But to erase it. You don't know how far you've come unless you see where it started. Thank you, sister. Preach, girl. (laughs) I'm sorry. We're in the modern world. It has been uh, updated (laughs) to bitch, yo. As in, as in. You are bitching, not that you are. We no longer use it the other way. <laughs> it's not like yo bitch. It's yo, yo bitching. So, where I grew up, there was, I, I say was because they've since removed a bunch of them. They had a bunch of Confederate statues and things, and they've taken them down. Okay, I understand, you know, a lot of the history can be bad, but you can't just not talk about why it was there because apparently there was like some great achievement and and something that people appreciated that's why they put the statues there yes it makes me wonder Mm. if this continues in this direction down in virginia beach virginia there's this beautiful beautiful statue right on the beach of king triton a merman Mm. so he's got the big fish tail and he's got dolphins around him beautiful But it makes me wonder, if we continue in this direction, will we start removing books about mermaids and statues of mermaids because they misrepresent women in this style, etc.? Or is this a good thing? So, okay, what else have we had bump in the past handful of years? What else have we updated or removed? Oh gosh, we had we had, we had a pretty decent list. Andrea, you said you had a list before the show started. Do you you have some more stuff on there you want to pull oh, up? Well, we've got you know like curriculum in schools. We already went over some literature, um, like statute. History is definitely other- updated constantly mm-hmm. in school. History is definitely constantly updated. This holiday season, we all wish for hope and healing. Children and families who spend their holidays at the hospital deserve a reason to believe in first steps, in giggles, high fives, and hugs. For 150 years, Children's National Hospital has provided world-class care and groundbreaking research. Please donate today to help patients and healthcare heroes this holiday season. Visit childrensnational.org slash holiday. That's childrensnational.org slash holiday. With MailChimp, you get a whole lot more than a URL. You get an all-in-one marketing platform to help drive sales. That means you can connect your data to make more informed, smarter decisions. And you get powerful automation tools like our customer journey builder to ensure you never miss an opportunity to turn shoppers into loyal customers. So if you're ready to integrate your marketing and boost sales, get started today at MailChimp.com slash smart marketing. MailChimp, built for growing businesses in school and changed and depending on where you go it's different it's true like what part of the country um you know if you want to update some shit how about updating that so all our kids learn the same thing so you don't have people arguing about history how about we make it consistent and we learn you know the same thing the good the bad and the ugly because each side wants to be seen as the right one the they winner do. but there shouldn't so. be sides when you're looking at history there should be this is history this is what we grow together going forward instead of further apart still running that dividing line and by the way but Julie, you know, go ahead Ed. go ahead travis i'm sorry no go on that very word is starting to be challenged history yeah, there was mention yeah. earlier about 
you know, in the 70s and 80s, women wanted to change the word women or woman, so it removed the word man or men from it by putting a Y in it or whatever. And, and that has come back around to be discussed mm -hmm. and also making it gender neutral by putting an X in it. But let me read a few comments. Jewel says, President Obama took time to explore teachable moments when they occurred during his presidency. And Werdewin, in reference to the history thing, says it can change from county to county within a state, let yeah. alone when you're looking at the difference between Maine's history and Georgia's history and California history curriculums. Yeah. So I, what I'm wondering, okay, because I only know what's happening here in the United States. The other countries have this issue? Yes. They I've seen now. it about France. I've seen it about England. England, they're starting to tear down statues because of the affiliation with the slave trade. Um, slavery was a bad, terrible, ugly thing. Sure, absolutely. Slavery has existed since there's been mankind on this planet. Yes, mankind on this planet. It's existed. You can't deny the achievements that somebody made in their mark in history just because they owned a slave. It, it's ridiculous. It's ludicrous. Fun fact, when I look at my friends, <clears throat> and I, I have friends across all different races, all different lifestyles, ethnic background, genders and ages and religions, blah, blah, blah. And as I discuss this with different people, generally, the younger you get, the more offended they get by these things. Whereas when I talk to people who are 40, 50, 60, 70, they're just like, eh. <laughs> See where it says, apparently, where I grew up in Washington State, our history courses pulled no punches. It was all the atrocities. <laughs> I think atrocities need to be that blast of icy cold water in the face. So we go, look, look, let's not do that shit again. Right, exactly. Andrea said that earlier. If we get rid of it, we'll repeat it. Yeah. Yeah, because, you know, if, if things have happened, sometimes it's in your subconscious and probably through the generations. So if, if a lot of this is taken away and no longer visible, who's to say some of the generations that are coming up aren't going to do the same thing? They can not thinking anything of it so yeah. well i think we're trying to drive our society in, in a far enough direction away from this these things it's not a matter of not thinking about it before you do it it becomes unthinkable um can we go too far in the other direction though do you think oh absolutely and we will i think sure. in sure. some ways we already have uh, but we'll go further, because, yeah. Well, yeah, because... Yeah. Here's humanity oh. going, uh, hold my beer. Here's the thing. If if somebody looks at me and they see the color of my skin and they form a negative opinion about me just because of the color of my skin, you cancel out Uncle Ben's Rice, Aunt Jemima, Dr. Seuss books, um... Tom Sawyer, Huck Finn, To Kill a Mockingbird, whatever it is, the list is endless, okay, that they're canceling out. zippity doo -dah, the Song of the South, you can't even watch that anymore in the United States. It's not going to change the opinion that they have when they look at me and see the color of my skin. It's really not going to change the future generations either because they're going to continue to teach their children and grandchildren whatever yes and opinion no. they have. If there's not the supporting kid. source material, the kids have less reinforcement of the opinion. You just have an older person who you tend to rebel against and go in the other direction anyway. But when you have it, it's saturated with, I, I almost want to say anti-culture. Um, it can influence the children. Because I have seen six-year-olds that are just hateful little fuckers about anybody who doesn't look like them. By the way, on both sides mm -hmm. of the fence, if anybody's like, oh, it's all those little white kids, mm -mm, no, mm, I'm, mm. and by the way, listen to some stand-up comedians. Joe Coy will tell you who's the most hateful against his people. His people? Andrea? <laughs> yeah, pretty much. It, it, what, what 
nationality or ethnic background is, uh, Joe? I believe he is Korean. Right, and he was saying something That's like... Uh, anyhow, he mentioned... And, and if, if Tajin was here in chat, he'd be able to help me out with this. But yeah, you know, when it comes to the southeast portion of the continent of Asia, there is a lot of prejudice between the different countries down there. Oh, yeah, Japanese and Koreans. Yeah. Right. Oil and water, baby. So... I know we're talking about now, but in years in the past, what's some of the things that they changed and updated like we're doing now that maybe we don't even know was around? You think that's happened too? Oh, I think that's happened multiple times, especially... I'm sorry. No, go on. And maybe we're repeating some of that because they erased it and we don't know. Well, also, I think the people that are in power, and I'm going to use a, a topical thing here, I have seen, and Ed has seen, and Andrea has seen, history change on what was the trigger point of the Civil War, what was the catalyst. And it boils down to, from what we learned in history, money. Money. Now, slavery became a political leverage. Yep. And But it all had to do with money. And we're not going to go into that history or whatever. Feel free to research it on your own. But here's what I'm saying. The people with the money get to rewrite it. And right now, instead of Civil War being about history, wouldn't it just sound better? I'm sorry. Civil War being about money. Wouldn't it sound better and we sound like a better human being instead of going... We just want to control of all the processing and manufacturing of the poor farmer's grain. Instead, we go, well, we did it for other human beings. Oh, absolutely. It sounds better. And I want to read a, a thing or two here real quick. Sorry, guys. Word says, I have the growing theory that this is an overreaction of a general empathy versus systematic bigotry. The latter having grown in strength since the 1910s with the separation of religious beliefs. I know of a case where a Japanese author lost a publishing deal because one of his characters was a figure who killed thousands in World War II. Hmm. Sorry, I'm just making sure my speakers aren't buzzing. So we've, we've got 20 minutes left. Can we talk about are we treating the symptom or are we treating the cause? I don't know if I, it'll take 20 minutes, but yeah. <laughs> more like 20 years or more. We're, it's it's just a symptom. We're, we're not doing anything to really fix it. I mean, Andrea's question earlier, what happened in the past? I mean, I, I was born in 1964, so I can't really remember the entire desegregation movement, but I, I have some very vivid glimpses. I was thinking earlier... I remember when my parents wouldn't take me shopping to the next town over because they got eggs and apples and so forth and so on thrown at them in the streets. But, but there was things happening then. There was an actual movement happening to end desegregation. There's not an actual movie, movement happening now to fix anything. We're just saying that makes me feel bad, so it needs to go away. Check the yeah. chat, Ed, and include that. Uh, yes, absolutely. Uh, Charlene says, we're treating the loudest voices this honestly. And that's pretty much what we're doing. People are screaming, so, oh, we're going to do this to make you feel a little bit better. Or as whichever one of the Baldwin brothers said when he fired Aunt Jemima, no, you make us feel bad. That's why we're doing this, but. Yeah. And that last statement, by the way, Ed is referring to a Saturday Night Live skit, if I'm not mistaken, right? Yes. Yeah. Um, which was very tongue-in-cheek because there are times from what Ed says and humor like that, it basically has to question, are we actually... 
hold on, I can't think how to say this. Um, sure, by doing this, we're, we're showing support and whatnot, but also by doing this, maybe we're, it's not reverse racism, it's not anti-racism. What's the word I'm looking it for? Is. It, it is. It, it's, it's flipping racism. It's like coming at racism from the other direction where it's still a bit racist to remove these icons due to public pressure and outcry. And again, I look at people our age, Ed, and I talk to you know some of the men and women of color that I work with. And the younger you go, by the time – and by the way, I'm not talking about teenagers because teenagers are still like mm, – they haven't had enough of the real world to have a real opinion right. yet. They, they will echo what they were taught from their surroundings. But when I talk to a 50-year-old versus a, a 25-year-old, there, there's a very different shift in opinion. And yeah, I like what Shar there that said, we're treating loudest voices, squeaky wheel. Yeah. Um, and it's, so well. and it's not always black voices shouting out, by the way, about, no. you know, black racism. It's where it says, my grandma, who was very racist, told me something once. <laughs> Hold on, let me read the rest of this before I go out loud. Okay, but it's difficult to relate accurately because she did not say it in appropriate terms. Um, <clears throat> so, what is the cause? What cause... Are we not treating – and not cause as in you pick up your banner and you march for a cause, but – um, oh, see, Char, I'm glad you showed up. I like how you said that. Young whites who wear guilt like a pride flag. Yeah. And absolutely, there are some people out there, and they go and get their share of attention by crying out how horrible they are. How horrible they are. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's an interesting way to put it. Oh. What Word was saying earlier, to build on that, Word says, Grandma, in regard to desegregation, said, quote, You want to make a chance? You don't bust kids all over the place. You make their schools and neighborhoods better so the whites will want to be there. <laughs> that's a slow process to do that it's a fair point but it's a slow process ah thank you I'm sorry you want to make a change not a chance My, um, here's what I'm going to say whatever we're doing it's not going to happen overnight it's not going to happen in a year it is a long term Please. thing and it is largely driven by conversations like this mm -hmm. conversations where we look at the good and the bad and we shine a light on it. Andrea, you look like you might have something to add. You got a thought real quick? She's thinking. I, I do have thoughts. Are we getting ready to wrap up? Uh, we've got 15 minutes left if we want to okay. go the full well, hour. Here's the thing. Yeah. Okay. Um, so here's the thing. Now, this is all about race, of what we're talking about, you know, with the race thing. Okay. I understand that's a problem. What about, <laughs> what about me? I want to see an update in society where women are paid what they're worth in a job and not lower because they're not got that's the main thing in, that i have a problem with because as that, a female <laughs> that is a fair point because largely we do go well let's make this about you know we have uh, black hate and violence and now we have asian hate and violence and yes, it's good to put the spotlight on what's happening, but when that becomes the motivator for somebody's benefiting from it, and I don't mean the violence, they're not betting, benefiting directly over the violence, they're benefiting by pointing that spotlight towards it. And it's not just the people who now get that spotlight of attention. There is somebody holding that spotlight that turned it there for a reason. And everybody goes, that's the right reason we should do this. But they don't realize there's somebody making a profit off this somehow. Oh, absolutely. Political. This is all political game. It's the vision for political game. But it's 
concept no is thing. good and solid, Anti -gunner, though, right? Pro -gunners. Hmm? But the concept is still good. The concept of let's <laughs> draw attention to these things so we can go, hey, that's what you don't do. And hold on, I'm going to read a comment here before... Drop, good to see you. Thank you for swinging by. Let me raise a glass to you there. Um, and I had something in my throat anyway. I had to swallow it. It was burning. Horrible. Oh. Drop says, dang, whatever happened to being nice to all? Until they're rude to yeah. you. And just live for the day and just don't worry. And just worry about what is around you. And just move along and enjoy life. <clears throat> Drop, that is a great life philosophy, and I think all three of us here agree with it. Unless it means you're turning a blind eye to an actual problem and just purposely staying oblivious. Now, day-to-day -day in your one-on-one -on -one encounters, that is a great way to live. In the bigger picture, we do have to understand there's a larger scape and scope here. And now, Ed or Andrea, one of you started a concept and idea of how to treat the cause or go to the source of the problem. Well, she asked the question. And, uh, Repeat it because Travis obviously forgot it. <laughs> it's just another issue for updating society with, is that what you're talking about, Ed, what I just said? Yeah. Okay. Um, what about women? Women, yeah. What about what about me? <laughs> right. Well, because it's there's. I mean, I know a lot of things have gotten better, but there's still a lot of women's issues too. And it doesn't matter what race or color or religion, whatever. Do you guys think it would be better and easier if we dress addressed equality across the board as a whole? Sure. Or if we broke it into, let's get black equality, women's equality, Asian equality, transgender equality, wouldn't it, would it be harder or easier equality. if we just went, yeah, how about fucking human rights and people equality? Yeah. and People equality. Mm -hmm. You know? And by the way, you can say people now, you just can't say you people. Big difference, apparently. Okay. Well, equality for all y'all. Okay. <laughs> I mean, and you know, equality sounds good and well, but it doesn't. I don't know how well that would work. How do we <laughs> how do we begin to address that without creating basically the uh, same shit we're looking at now? Going, who's holding the spotlight? Yeah. Who, who's getting something? And by the way, it might not be somebody profiting off of it by like, hey, I'm now selling stickers and T-shirts for anti-hate. It could be, let's make them look over there while we do a thing over here. Over here. How about that? And I'm not into, you know, the every time it happens, the wag the dog thing. I get it. I understand it. I believe it happens. I don't think Good it movie. happens every goddamn time something happens in the news. And some people are like, what are they hiding now? It's like, you know what? It was two weeks ago you asked that about this other thing. <laughs> Mixing cultures is good, says Wordwin. I think so. <laughs> what, Andrea? Oh, well, I got it now. <laughs> Sorry, Andrea. Travis is catching up. This is Ed. <laughs> and I like a little chocolate vanilla swirl going on there. Mm -hmm. a, mm. <laughs> just don't mix yeast cultures. Mm. Ew. <laughs> so how do no, we? As far as, you go ahead. I'm sorry. No. As, say, as far as um, fixing the problem, treating the source instead of the symptom. That's a good question. I don't. You, you got to get down to exactly what is the source. Hmm. And sometimes that's hard to pinpoint accurately so that you can fix it. Eradicate the human race from the earth. Uh, well, there we go. That would definitely take care of it. Get out that Dr. Maybe Seuss book. Start with the children. Work your way up. <laughs> Maybe that's why the dinosaurs are gone. Maybe they had this problem and they're just like, yep, get rid of all the dinosaurs. Let's start over. 
<laughs> just like fucking T Rexes, dickhead pterodons. Look, they're having a gang war. Mm-hmm. Um, who Triceratops thinks he's special because he got three from one. That's right. <laughs> Word, Wordwin's like, who will pet the doggies? Nobody. The cats. I saw a meme today about God is standing there and there's a German Shepherd and a Doberman and a cat in front of him. And he says, German Shepherd, why should, you know, why are you what do you believe in? Why should I let you into heaven and stuff? And um, the German shepherd says, yeah, I believe in order and kindness and working together to build something stronger. And he says, great, come come sit at my right hand. And he says to the Doberman, what do you believe in? And he says, well, I believe in love and hope and protecting those I care for. And God says, that's great. Come on over here and sit by my left hand. And he looks at the cat and he says, Cat, what do you believe? And the cat says, I believe you're sitting in my chair. That's accurate. And I'm, I'm pausing here. I actually told that joke because it looked like uh, Char was typing a little something there and maybe got cut off. It maybe didn't finish, yeah. Right, there we go. <laughs> now we're insulting <laughs> Jules I'm people. I'm insulting. Dinosaurs. I'm bringing up the past so you can learn from it. <laughs> past <laughs> this keyboard i swear we'll finish typing it because you it sounds like an interesting question we'll glossing over our and i just want to see what direction she was going with that question because <laughs> it could be history it could be current events it could be and by the way when we say go, go to the source of the problem we don't mean the ori- originating originating point in time and space we mean the core problem that's what that's we mean by source, yeah. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Sometimes it's hard to to figure that out, but then again, I'm not that dedicated, so it won't be me. Good me. question. I, I don't think so. She asked, will glossing over our history do anything to help future generations become closer to equal? By the way, let me say, let me add into history, you have to realize pop culture is is history oh sure okay dr seuss was pop culture at a point Mm -hmm. mark twain's books was pop culture Mm -hmm. 150 years ago okay these are pieces of i'm only 50 dude it was required reading in my house but i'm saying he wrote them in the 1870s to 1910 (laughs) that that era so um and they were popular then too he was a popular writer for years, which is why it was required reading when we were in school. But my point is, by removing these pieces of history or taking out these pieces of puzzle, and yeah, nobody's going to miss them. Nobody's going to know they're gone that's never seen them there. It's the people that knew they were there that look at them going, well, I feel a space there. I think it is more important to discuss humanity's failures and atrocities to teach. Okay, Grimm's fairy tales. By the way, Grimm took the original fairy tales and made them more family friendly. And if you go read the original Grimm okay. fairy tale book, there's some fucking scary shit in there because mm-hmm. Disney dumped them down lost more. Fairy tales. Right, and they are. And I think that's what history should often be. Yeah, we could talk about a great victory, but let's talk about the cautionary tale. Andrea? That reminded me of one of the things on my list. Go ahead. My list somewhere. The cautionary tale thing. Um, a lot of this came up with, uh, what is that movie? Is it Space Jams? Yeah, Space Jam. They're coming out with Space Jam 2. Space Jam 2. Okay, so I read this article. I found it very interesting to see the different point of views. So they had a scene with Pepe Le Pew. Everybody knows who Pepe Le Pew is. Now he's chasing after the cat because he wants love. Um, so Andrew and I met too. I was all like, ha, ha, ha. hello, mon cher. No, wrong accent. But anyway. He's um, got a French accent. So, oh, no. well, I, I, yeah. You, I'm sorry. I was like, duh. <laughs> 
Contundente. So they took Pepe Le Pew out of, took his scene out of the movie because they're like, um, he promotes wait, rape, rape culture. Okay. Um, I have a question for you as a woman. Uh-huh. Did you feel offended by the Pepe Le Pew's actions in the cartoons? No. What about now that you're older and understand what it could mean? No, because it's a cartoon. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> um, and, you know, if I see a skunk coming at me, oh no. Um, I just want to let everybody know I was offended by the coyote's actions. The fact that he could get three minute delivery on any fucking thing he picked out of a catalog. At me, yeah. Yeah, but I will now point out if you rearrange the letters in the word Acme, it spells Amazon. <laughs> <laughs> so we're we're getting there, and now well, actually, and it's not three minutes, but it is next day. So yeah, no it kind of freaks me out when I order something today and it's like on my door at nine a.m. I'm just like, well, that's kind of creepy. Almost, I can't mm-hmm. find my house that quick. So okay, so with the Pepe Le Pew thing. They're saying, oh, we got to cut it because it promotes rape culture. Okay, that, that's the reason and why. Well, the actress that was in the scene with the Pepe Le Pew character, the cartoon, um, she was being hit on and all this other stuff, and she was able to, like, stop it. She, like, punched him across the room, and I, I don't know what the scene is because I cut it. I didn't see it, but I'm going from what she said. She's like, you know, this was my way to take control of the situation and why was this scene cut couldn't it just be seen as a cautionary tale instead of just cutting it all together and this is from the actress's point of view that was being assaulted by that character i think that's a good point why why get rid of it why can't we use it as a cautionary tale britain's fairy tale you know here's what i'm gonna say let me warn anybody who is taking up arms or the flags or the cause to change the world because it's very easy for that person to become the very thing they hated, to become the very bully of going, you can't say what you want to say. You cannot speak anything against me because we will break you. Um... It ha- we have to be able to have the conversation. And that yeah. allows idiots to say stupid things sometimes. But when you have a conversation, you have to be willing to listen before you decide they're an idiot. I don't care how they're dressed. <laughs> um, so, <laughs> there we go. Andrea's got her mother of cats shirt on. Okay. Oh, yeah. Ed, Andrea, you guys have some closing thoughts, and I'll wrap this up, and we'll play some outro music real quick it's it's all kind of kind of frightening to me because as you said earlier it's is it reverse racism i i think so in a way i i feel like um the people in our society that have said you shouldn't name call are now becoming the name callers and laborers and it's it's ugly it's 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 not helping it's it's just ugliness in another form that's all it really truly is andrea Listen to both sides and make a decision. Don't just make the decision because it makes you feel better and it's easier. Or because that's what everybody put on Facebook. (laughs) Facebook's always right. Okay, let me do the wrap up here. Let's get us uh, set up. Um, I want to thank everybody for hanging out. I want to thank everybody for all the emails. And if you guys do have emails that you want to send us, you can send it straight to talkofthetavernshow at gmail.com. That's talk of the tavern show at gmail.com we do read them and if you have shows or topics you'd like to hear us discuss let us know if you have thoughts on the show let us know i um, want to thank everybody for supporting the channel and hanging out chatting with us subscribing following hosting as well as everybody who downloads shares the podcast and that kind of stuff you guys are awesome i want to thank everybody here who has supported us outside of the shows through Patreon, Ko-Fi, or Coffee, however you like to say it, PayPal, and more. Okay, don't forget to check out our other show, Right Night, that we do here on the Tavern. If you want to come visit us live, 
Monday nights, generally 8 o'clock, and uh, that's at twitch.tv slash Travis Tavern Talk. Okay, guys, you have a good night. We got some outro music, and we will catch you again next time. Thanks for joining us in the discussion shenanigans tonight. You are the one thing that makes the show what it is. Don't forget to join us at the Tavern next week. Until then, have fun, keep learning, and be good to one another. Now, raise your glass in good cheer. Enjoy the small moments every day and steamy dreams every night. While traveling, it's usually best to pack light. When it comes to money, carrying some cash and having an alternative like Zelle is a great idea. Zelle's an easy way to send and receive money with people you trust at any U.S. bank. It's already in thousands of different banking apps, and it's money straight into your bank account in minutes fast. Look for Zelle in your banking app today. Safe travels. While traveling, it's usually best to pack light. When it comes to money, carrying some cash and having an alternative like Zelle is a great idea. Zelle's an easy way to send and receive money with people you trust at any U.S. bank. It's already in thousands of different banking apps, and it's money straight into your bank account in minutes fast. Look for Zelle in your banking app today. Safe travels.